his kingdom cannot be. He rules our earth and heaven. The keys of death are devoured. Jesus gives up your voice. Lift up your voice, rejoice again. Rejoice in glorious hope, our Lord the God shall come and take his servants up to their singing this morning. You're glad you're here? Are you glad the weather's going in the right direction? I sure am. And uh, to be honest with you, we really haven't had it too bad this winter. Uh, we had a little bit of snow. I know the farmers will be happy to get rid of a lot of this ice, but it's going to be the muddy march, right? That's what I wrote to you yesterday. Take the muddy march, but it comes. But praise the Lord, God allows us to continue to gather. And again, we've got to keep in mind our Christian brothers and sisters that are having troubles, and we're going to talk a, a little bit about that. Many of you know that um, uh, one of the uh, missionaries that we support uh, is a national pastor there, and we have been friends now for several years. I lost contact with, with him about 8 o'clock yesterday morning, and so um, he's got a beautiful home, a uh, beautiful house in Russia. It's Krasiva Dome. And, uh, and he's just a wonderful man. Um, we're going to see a video of him and then the pastor who, who actually oversees all of the Baptist churches with the BIM ministry, B-I-E-B-I-M ministry. And we'll just show a little video of them together. I did contact Sam Stablodian, um, and he said, just show this video, and he sent it to me. So, um, so you'll be able to see this morning a little bit of it. But we've got to remember to keep him in prayer. And also pray that God would continue to do his will, because there's many that are going to be saved because of this. And uh, we look at the negative a lot of times. We just got to trust the Lord. And I'm, I'm glad you're here this morning. We have missionary Nathan and his wife, Laura, is that right? Uh, Roberts, and what a blessing to see them here and their children. When you came here the first time, you didn't have as many kids. There are certain missionaries that have a baby every year. And they're one of them. And so uh, we have, we have uh, uh, other missionaries, uh, we, we've had them for, I think, uh, 14 years. Now they have, I think they have 14 children. And uh, really, uh, they're in the Owens family, and they're in Bulgaria, and hopefully we'll see them soon. Uh, but what a blessing to see all of you here this morning. But what we need to do is just right now take time and pray and get our hearts in tune for, of course, the singing, but also the preaching of God's word. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful that we can gather like this this morning. We know that uh, we've been very fortunate here in this country um, with peace, and we've been able to uh, stay away from persecution. Um, your blessings have been here. And the reason for that, Father, we believe is so that we can publish and uh, prepare missionaries to take the word of God to the lost. Lord, we pray th this morning specifically on uh, the city, the capital city of, of, of the Ukraine, Kiev. We just pray, Lord, that you would be with the people there. I pray that you would strengthen their president, that he would stand tall, Lord, and he would stay strong, and I pray for your hand of protection upon him and his family. Lord, I pray that the gospel will be able to continue and even now disperse into other parts of Moldova and Poland and Georgia and other places where people will flee. Lord, even here in the United States, Lord, I pray that the gospel would be able to be preached and heard and that more would be saved because of what's going on. But we ask that you would 
um, show your strength again to the Ukrainian people, Lord. We ask that you put your hand of protection upon the precious uh, pastors that are there and the families that are there. Lord, I pray for Vitaly Yuchenko and his dear, sweet family. I pray you protect them. And Lord, I pray that you would give him power and strength from above. And somehow, Lord, I pray that you would even uh, in his heart know that we here, this little church here in Madison is praying for him and we love him. Show him, Lord, that you'll take care of him and his family, please. Lord, I pray that you'd be with our own church. We're so thankful for those that have recovered from hurts and physical problems and dif different things, Lord. But we're here this morning, and we're here to fellowship. We're here to hear your word. We just pray that you would help us. And But we thank you so much for strengthening our people. There's, there's so many that are a part of grace, and we just pray that you would continue to help us to, to meet the needs of, of the widows and the people that are, are, are not well off, Lord. We just pray that you'd help us to be able to help them and open our eyes. Father, I pray for a consciousness of your presence. I pray, Lord, that people will know that you are here, that you are breathing on us, Lord. I pray that you would use the word of God to touch the hearts as we look at the words this morning and the Holy Spirit, the author of the book, would touch the hearts of the people that are reading. And Lord, I pray that if there's somebody here this morning that has not put their faith and their trust in Jesus alone, that they would do that today. And I pray, Lord, that if there's someone here that's overburdened to the place of tears, that you would strengthen them. We ask for your blessings now to come. Thank you again for letting us gather in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before you sit down, shake hands with at least 15 people before you sit down, all right? <laughs> I'm going to run out of fingers and toes. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you, how's your knee? Oh, it's my leg today. It really hurts. It's your right one, though? Yeah. Your leg one is okay? Yeah. It's uh, Years ago, I got it caught between a gate and a chain. And then I fell off the skid loader this past fall and hit the femur bone. That metal's pretty hard. Well, you know, we'll talk about it sometime. Maybe we get together. But my injury for my back is I, I don't have any pain this morning. None. Wow. And I'm telling you that this is a miracle. But my left leg doesn't flop because they did this surgery. I got a big long line in the back of yeah. the incision. But they knew what they were doing. And uh, But you know what? It goes back to the motorcycle accident in 1979. When you start cutting or hurting other parts of the body, it hurts the part that was hurt years ago. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Oh. 
And it's her guy right in front All right, let's find our seats quickly. Want to hear from what's going on in the Ukraine?
about what's going on in the Ukraine, and we're so happy to be partners with the BEAM ministry that's there. And again, I was in that church, was able to address their Sunday school teachers years ago, just to north of there, uh, north uh, west of there is a little small town. Uh, it's called Chernova Sloboda, and in that little town is a church called Grace Baptist Church that our people put the money together and was able to start a church there and pay the pastor, uh, Brother Yuchenko, the one that was speaking, the last one that spoke up there, he's the pastor of that particular church. I've been there. It's like going back 100 years. They had an outhouse, and they also had a place where we were able to go into a home. And it, honestly, it smelled like my great-grandma's house uh, up in Fenimore, uh, Mount Ida area. But I just wanted to give you a little touch of some of the people that are there. We're so blessed to be able to partner with them, but they are asking for our prayers. And again, the video was taking place um, prior to the invasion. And so every day they're getting closer and closer. But the, the, the Soviet Union is really upset. Russia is really upset because for some reason they can't do this quickly. Uh, and uh, hopefully God will give the Ukrainian soldiers who aren't getting much help uh, from the United States, to be honest with you. Um, there may be some guys that will uh, think about using their own money and their own helicopters to go in. And that's a possibility to help them. And we'll see what happens, but be praying for the folks that are there. Let's all stand. We'll have another song. Brother, why don't you come? The Haven of Rest. We'll sing that. And then uh, after that, then Aaron, you can do the announcements. Is that okay? Wonderful. Number 404. 404, the Haven of Rest. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, no burden with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered the heaven of rest. I my soul in the heaven of rest, I'll sail the white seas of old. The tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep, in Jesus I'm safe evermore. I hear myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word my fetters fell off and I anchored my soul the haven of rest is my Lord I'm in the heaven of rest, I'll sail the white seas no more. The tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep. In Jesus I'm safe evermore. The song of my so since the Lord made me whole has been the old story so blessed of Jesus who saved whosoever will have a home in the heaven of wrath I'll enter my soul I'll sail the white seas no more. The tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep. In Jesus I'm safe evermore. Oh, come to the Savior, he patiently waits to save by his power divine. 
seated. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church. We're so glad you could join us this morning. If anyone's here for the first time or the first time in a very long time, please raise your hand. As the ushers go past, they'd like to give you a visitor's card and a gift. If you would fill out that visitor's card and put it in the offering plate in just a few minutes, we'd appreciate having a record of your visit. We're so glad you could join us this morning. Now we're going to do the announcements uh, if you take your bulletins, of course, today, missionary Nathan Roberts and his family are here with us. Uh, they'll be here in the morning and the evening. Uh, this evening, there will be a missions team meeting at five o'clock before the evening service. And we will have the monthly birthday and anniversary fellowship after the evening service. So be sure to come hungry. Uh, March 5th is the sportsman's banquet. It will be at 530 at Calvary Baptist Church in Sun Prairie. The address is there. There will be a love offering taken uh, at the event. There's a sign-up sheet outside those doors. If you could sign up, if you're planning to attend, we would appreciate getting a count. On March 6th will be the Lord's Supper in our evening service as usual. And then, of course, there are other sign-up sheets out there, as there have been for the... Uh, Sunday dinners for the Maranatha students, snacks for the teens on Wednesday night, and the uh, Friday dinners for the Reformers Unanimous Ministry. If you could sign up to provide some of those, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Pastor? All right. Just wanted to say a few things regarding the Beast Feast. Um, it is potluck, so if you'd like to make something for that when you come, uh, we do have a lot of items to be able to give away to those are black powder guns and uh, uh, rifles and so on. But we wanted to be able to do this and then uh, expand it a little more every year. This year, uh, the Lord has really blessed us with some really interesting items and it's just going to be a wonderful evening. It starts at 5.30 next Saturday night at the gymnasium in Sun Prairie. they got a beautiful facility there. We asked if we could use it. It's just too small downstairs to have uh, a bunch of sweaty men in there. And so uh, we're going to have it over in the gym where we can stay away from them, maybe six feet apart from some of them. You never know. But uh, we, we always have a good time. And, and, and some of the guys actually... Are, are bringing their friends that don't know Christ. And so it's a great opportunity uh, to be able to speak to them. As many of you know, I love the outdoors. And uh, I should say, I like the outdoors. I love the Lord, but I like the outdoors. And uh, my son, Josh, will be the speaker this year. Looking forward to having a wonderful evening uh, over there. If you want to sign up to this morning, we hope that you would um, take care of that. And, and I was thinking about um, you years ago um, and, and how we could actually have devotions. My family, I have four sons, we raised them all, and uh, family devotions were kind of sporadic uh, and, and d difficult. Sometimes I felt like they're not really listening, and so I felt like it would be, it would be good for me to, to write a little booklet called From the Front Room to the Throne Room. And so I did, and, uh, and then I thought, well, what would be good to be able to put together maybe a devotional here on a Sunday that you can have in your bulletin? This one's on trials, of course. It's a monthly focus. It's in your bulletin if you wanted to take that out. And just, it's going to focus on James chapter 5, 7 through 11. And some of these verses we talked about uh, this morning in the, in the men's Sunday school class. And the devotions are pretty simple. Um, on the front and on the back, it has uh, just a format for you to take. What's your first step? You know, take a few minutes and discuss the scripture and so on. Uh, the second step then would be ask your, your family for personal praises. A lot of times you won't have your kids don't talk unless they're around their friends. They may not come to you with their needs, but if you're asking them for a praise first and then a prayer, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of, um, helps with that communication. So, uh, then take the quiet time with the family and you don't have to do this. 
But this is a tool, a resource I thought that we could put together for you to be able to have for your children. Maybe you just want to do it alone and just have your own devotions and go through that time with the Lord. Every single day, we need his strength and we need his help. Amen? Amen. And so just a little tool for you. Once men can come, if you'll come at this time, we'll take up the offering. And again, we're able to give a portion to God. Uh, he's been so good to all of us. He's taken care of grace. And if you want to give toward the building fund, we can see in the bulletin how much the Lord has supplied for us. Uh, we're about halfway there and um, to cover everything. And so we want to be able to get there. Where Our plans are to begin April 23rd, or I should say April of 2023. And so um, a year from this April, we're going to break ground. Looking forward to that. And uh, boy, we sure need a new parking lot and need the, some extra space. And uh, it's just going to be such a blessing. And so keep praying and asking God to be able to supply the needs that we have. Parker Spurley, can you thank the Lord for the offering, please? Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the beautiful sunshine and the warm weather that's coming out today. Lord, it's just such a blessing and it feels like Warm and face and walk outside, Lord. Just bring out to uh, you just offering for the thirty round Lord here in this corner. I uh, see the doors open and the lights on. Any more lost souls to know you? Amen. Amen. Just always amazed at how the piano player can finish just on time as the guys are done. I always thought that you had like a rear view mirror that you're watching them or something at that time. Brother Nathan, why don't you come on up here, brother? We're so glad you're here today and uh, introduce your family if you could and then just give us a little bit of a update. And then tonight he's going to take the whole night tonight. So you don't want to miss this tonight. He's going to show us a video of what the Lord's been doing. Um, but again, it's been like nine years or so or something like that about that time. Thank you, Pastor Howell, and uh, thanks for making us feel welcome. Uh, we are glad to be back with you all. I don't remember exactly what year it was, 2013, 14, uh, we were here, and uh, we were here with the Reigns family uh, as well, and a couple other families, and so it's uh, good to be back with you again uh, here at Grace Baptist Church. Uh, we are missionaries in South Africa, and uh, we've returned in October for a furlough uh, in are glad to have two of our kids in our church's academy and then another one at uh, Falls Baptist Academy in Menominee Falls. So uh, we're glad for those resources. When you're on the mission field, you realize how much we have here in America and uh, lots to be thankful for. So we're thankful for that. And uh, my dad had a goal for all of us kids, and there's 10 in my family, not a missionary family, but uh, there's, there's 10 of us, but his goal was that all of us go out into full-time ministry. And uh, it's a blessing having all those resources here in America. So I challenge you to take advantage of that, all these resources you have to aim your kids to go out into the mission field, be pastors, or be faithful church members right here. Uh, we originally went to South Africa in 2012 to fill in for my wife's parents who were missionaries there, and then we returned in 2014 to work with them. Uh, they're no longer on the field. They're back here in the United States. Um, so we're going to be going 
kind of alone, but the Lord is with us, and uh, he's provided uh, people there, South Africans, that uh, we're working with as far as church members. We don't have any actual uh, co-laborers, co uh, co-workers, per se, but uh, when we left, we were able to find someone to fill in for us for a few weeks, and then the Lord provided a national pastor uh, in the area that has been filling in for us uh, three Sundays a month, and then there's another pastor that fills in the, the remaining Sunday. And so it's actually been kind of a good thing for us. The church that we're working with is called Bible Baptist Church. It's in Kempton Park, which is a suburb of Johannesburg. And uh, we'll tell you more about it uh, this evening, but uh, it's just been a blessing to see how God is working in our absence in a way that couldn't have happened if we were there. Uh, because, you know, when you're there, people become dependent on you. But when you're gone, uh, it's kind of like when you send your kids out. They've got to take care of all the responsibilities that you took care of for their whole growing up years. So we're thankful for that. And uh, we'll share with you more about that. Uh, a few, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, actually, 2018, the Lord gave us the opportunity to take five children into our home. Um, so we'll tell you a little bit about that and uh, what the Lord is doing with that. So please come this evening. We'll show a video and uh, tell you more about the work. Thank you so much, brother. Just to give you an idea, just a little bit of what the missionary team's all about. They're going to meet tonight at five o'clock is that we have taken on so many missionaries and I plan on taking more that we're going to dividing them up. Now we've divided them up. They divided them up in regions and Carolyn did that on the bulletin board out there. You can see how it's done differently. But now we've actually divided them up now to where we're putting one person or a couple over five missionaries, two domestic and three international missionaries to give them a little bit more of a, of a, of a communication to them. They're writing letters to us. We're never communicating to them. Now, here's the thought. I've been in former Yugoslavia and Bulgaria, Turkey. I've been everywhere. I've been in Malaysia. And whenever I get into these places, they're always lacking like-minded fellowship. There's one thing that they always say, I wish I had some like-minded fellowship. Well, the internet has come in place where Mr. Ott, he's 81 on the mission field, can look at his daughter's garden growing. Uh, so they got this a little bit where the internet has been able to help with some of that too. But if we could, as a church, face-to-face, -face, communicate with our missionaries better, not looking for them to communicate with us. We're not trying to get them to do more burdens and want to know what they're doing. We want to say, look what God is doing at Grace. And, and here's Grace Baptist, we want to support you and let you know we love you and we're praying for you. That, that connection is necessary. And so that's what we're doing tonight. If you want to come and join us, it's, we've got already got about nine or ten people in the team. We're going to meet in the teen room. Uh, the little ones can go ahead and be dismissed at this time, and I want you all to stand. We're going to sing another song. There's a junior church straight ahead out of those doors, and go straight ahead is where the junior church will meet. If the children will go there, they're all ready for you. And uh, looking forward to teaching you a little bit about the Bible, if the little ones can go. Brother. Number 657, 657, A New Name and Glory. Amen. I was once a sinner, but I can't hard it to receive. My Lord is but freely given, and I have many hopes left in birth. There's a new name unto the glory, and it's fine, it's fine. And the wife of angels sing the story. Open, and I 
Remain standing for the scriptures. Good morning. Uh, this morning we're going to be in Second Ch Second Timothy chapter one. Uh, I'm going to be reading verses eight through eighteen, and then once I'm done, we'll read verse um, twelve. Twelve all together. I don't know why I forgot. Second uh, Timothy chapter one verse eight. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, uh, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phy Phygelus and Her Hermogenes. The, the Lord give mercy unto the house of, oh, excuse me, Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when, when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, uh, thou knowest very well. And if we could read verse 12 all together, please. For which uh, I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us today. I'm thankful for everyone that was uh, able to be here this morning. Uh, I pray for the rest of the service today that 
uh, the special uh, music and that you would give Pastor strength during his ser uh, sermon. Uh, I pray that you would bring back everyone tonight for uh, fellowship and uh, the missionary preaching tonight. Uh, I pray for the rest of the week that everyone would travel safely. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. Persuasion is a powerful thing. I can uh, address a little bit of an issue last night. We had uh, a birthday party for my oldest grandson. His name is Wyatt Hunter Howell, and uh, he is uh, here this morning, I believe, somewhere. And uh, my mom kind of wanted to come. She addressed it during the, the, during the week earlier and uh, thought that she would be able to join us. And um, she wasn't able to have enough strength yesterday. My mom is 80. So I, I gave out her how old she is. Mom, you're watching from home. I know you are. But uh, I'm sorry, but she just didn't really have the strength. She's moving now to Portage um, area to be with my, my brother's taking care of her. And, um, but uh, at the last minute, I texted my mom and I said, are you going to come tonight to the birthday party? Well, she was planning on coming, but she was tired. She had moved a lot of stuff and... And so we, we, she said, come and get me, but give me 15 minutes to get ready. So I did and went and picked her up at her apartment complex and brought her back out to the farm. And uh, she stayed during the time we had uh, with the party and had great food and fellowship. And Wyatt got some things for his birthday. He's 14. Hard to believe that I have a 14-year-old grandson, as young as I look, I know. So, but uh, he he's 14 and it's hard to believe that Josh, my oldest son, is is um, going to be, what, 36? Uh, coming up May 31st, he's got his birthday, shares with his mom. And uh, my mom uh, wasn't going to come, but I persuaded her. I persuaded her by asking her to come, but I'll come pick you up. And she said, okay. And you know what's interesting afterwards, because on the way home, she just was in the car, I put her in the truck, she's just a little thing, and closed the door, you know, and, and, and she said, when I got in the truck, thank, I, I'm just so thankful I came tonight. 
sometimes when it comes to persuasion, um, we think of that word is in, some, in, in the scriptures, and we see it many times. I think about uh, Mrs. Ott, and I've given you the story before that I was able to fly into Southland and be with her in the last couple of days that she was on this earth, and, and uh, I would hear her in the room all by herself um, repeating this verse, verse number 12. Um, and then she also repeated another one where the word persuaded is being used. And, and uh, in, in her heart, she had an understanding of this, uh, of being persuaded or, or being confident. Uh, you know, I think uh, titling this particular message, I Stand Convinced, um, that there are certain things that I, I am not going to move on. Um, there are certain things that I am persuaded on, and there are certain things that I am, I am confident of. And um, in this particular verse, verse number 12, it says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What does the word persuaded mean according to the dictionary? influenced um, or drawn to an opinion or determination by argument, advice or reason suggested, convinced, induced is another word that you could use for the word persuaded. Uh, the word convince is a word that I like uh, because I, I know that we can say that I am or I am not convinced that this is so-and-so. And so the word convince, uh, if we were to look that word up, it would be to persuade or to satisfy the mind by evidence, to subdue the opposition of the mind to truth or to what is alleged and compelled to yield its assets as to convince a man of his errors or to convince him of what is really true. And I think when we come to the understanding, uh, a term that is used in our own circles, it is used a lot of times as the term apologetics. And you're able to uh, convince and persuade and to bring somebody out of a false way of thinking into a correct way of thinking. And let me just say this, that apologetics alone will never save anybody. The power of the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential when a, somebody becomes a born-again Christian. And so you can study and you can learn all of these things and you can ever be coming to knowledge, but never really coming to the truth of the gospel. That can happen if you're not careful. So reasoning itself is not going to get you to heaven. The Bible is very clear, for he mightily convinced the Jews, showing by the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ, speaking of the Apostle Paul. And Paul used this word uh, persuaded in other texts. He used it in Romans 4, 21, and being fully persuaded that he had promised and was able also to perform it. And so he had this persuasion and this understanding, and he was convinced in the promises of God. He was standing as a man who was convinced. And I think it's important for us to understand also that he wrote, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. You may think right now that nobody loves you. You may think right now that you've been rejected by the culture or society. You may not feel the love of your parents. You may not feel the love of your, of your kinfolks. I'm telling you this morning that God loves you like he loves you like you've never been loved before. His love for you is unending. It's an endless, awesome love from above. It's an agape love, and God gives it to us. You know how I know? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 13 says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. 
I think this in particular word is used here to help us understand that even though the hall of fame of those that were faithful is mentioned, that these people were persuaded that God was going to deliver them from their troubles. This word also was used when Paul was convincing King Agrippa. We remember the story in the book of Acts. And when then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. You've almost convinced me. You've convinced me by your zeal and your love and your the way that you respond to all the things that are going on around you. And the Apostle Paul is certainly a center of attraction because he wrote to Timothy regarding his fear and regarding his desires that he ought to stand as a young man that is convinced that the scriptures are true and that the God of heaven is the God of heaven. And he gave his only begotten son and his name was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ went to the cross for every nation, for every person, for every soul. And that particular individual can put their faith and their trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and be saved, not just for a short period of time, but from all eternity. What a powerful thing. In verse number seven, you can actually understand a little bit more of his writing because he's writing to the younger one, Timothy. And we know that Titus was older and Titus had more responsibility, even though the book of Titus only has three chapters. And we know that the, the, the desire was to put things in order on the island of Crete for Titus. But, but Timothy's direction and, and care by the Apostle Paul seems to be uh, more brought out in the first letter than it is the second letter, Second Timothy. But First Timothy here, he's trying to help him understand a little bit more, I mean in Second Timothy, about his fear problem. And he's saying, I don't want you to be afraid to give people the gospel. Sometimes we're afraid to give the gospel out. Let's just be honest. And you know, we live in a culture now where people want you to wear a mask and stay six feet away from them. And now you're going to be a creepy, friendly person without a mask on saying, hey, if you died today, would you go to heaven? Well, does you, what do you have in mind? Seriously, we live in a culture today where it is more difficult to get the gospel out. But are we convinced in it? We ought not to have the spirit of fear. And verse number seven tells us that, chapter one, verse seven of Second Peter, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And remember this, that fear will take your power away. Fear will take your love away. Fear will take your ability to have a sound mind. It'll take it away. Fear is a horrible thing. If you want to hear the second half of a wonderful message, come March 20th in the evening, Brother uh, Mauricio is going to be up. Fabulous message last Sunday night. And if you have the opportunity, please get on Facebook and, and share it with your friends. Beautiful message on the God of phobia or the God of fear in our culture today. But this is something that Paul thought I need to address with little young Peter and I got to, I mean, with little young Timothy. And I want him, I want him to know that he, he can't have that spirit of fear because, and here's why I, I know that the emphasis was in the area of getting the gospel out because of the next verse. The next verse says to him, uh, be not there. So he said, don't be afraid, okay? So, so be not, therefore, because of all the stuff I've told you earlier, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou, what? Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. And so he's speaking to young Timothy to help him to be able to have what, we, what I would call, and my first point is the foundation of confidence or so the foundation of his confidence then was that he believed and received the gospel of Jesus Christ. So here we are going back to the obvious. We're here today because of the gospel. We're here today because of what the Bible says. And sometimes people call Baptists, you know, they're the people that don't have any fun. They're the people that don't, you know, they don't do anything. They don't sing, dance, they don't do anything. They just sit around, you know. No, I, I, there's nobody in this room that has more fun than I do. And I'm praising the Lord. I have no pain this morning. Thank you for praying for me, and, and I can walk now like I'm a normal. I've got a big incision in the back of my leg, but, but that's okay. It'll heal up, and, and, and God's been so good through all of this, and I'm, I'm so excited about getting outside and out the outdoors. i got to take it easy. Everybody's saying, take it easy. Yeah, I'm taking it easy, but taking it easy for eight months, and it's been very hard. <laughs> what is the foundation of your confidence? What gives you that step of uh, quickness? What gives you that personality of kindness and 
that ability to continue to move forward when things get tough. The foundation of your confidence is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's powerful here because we actually believe and uh, receive at the same time the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse number 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1, gives us the gospel very clear. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and here you stand. He's speaking to those people at the church of Corinth, and he's letting them to know that they have put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and so that is the foundation of our confidence. And then we have an understanding to build upon that foundation. They would build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Your home needs to be built on that. Your life needs to be built upon that foundation of Christ and him crucified. We need to have this understanding. And I don't care how old a person is, when the Spirit of God works in them and you give them the gospel, they're going to hear and listen to you. And, and, and you know, Paul, sometimes, you know, when he's trying to convince or persuade, you know what they called him? The babbler, if you look in Acts chapter 17. What does a babbler have to say, you know? How is he going to be able to convince? Does he have something goofy to say again? But he's not ashamed of that. And he's telling Timothy, telling Timothy, don't you be ashamed either, Timothy. So he built his life on the foundation of Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, or chapter 3, verse number 11, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is salvation in none other. Matthew chapter 7 gives us that wonderful story. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, of course, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat at the house, and it fell, and it was a great fall. Interesting how you think about this, because it gives us an understanding of building our lives upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see very clearly in these few verses, in the beginning of this, verses 8 through 10, he is giving him the understanding of your confidence needs to be in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 9 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to the works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Pretty powerful thought that we actually have the grace of God given to us before the world began. We're saved by grace, not by works of righteousness not by attending church and doing all the things that you think you need to do. We were talking about this in Men's Sunday School class. We as humans like to do something. We want to help God. We think, I can do more. I can do this. I can do this. And God's saying, it's already done. You already have a haven of rest. The haven of rest is Jesus. And you come to him. And the simplicity that is in Christ is absolutely essential. And many of the children that come to the, 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 to the children's church program here can learn about Jesus Christ and receive him at a very early age. Many of you have trusted Christ at an early age. and Put your faith in him. The foundation is Christ, but also the foundation then of his confidence in verse number 8 and 9. Look at verse number 10 but is now made manifest, revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So he abolished death, he destroyed death, and he took away the sting and the, and, and the, 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 the fear of death. And death to some people is pretty spooky, you know. Uh, no matter how you... Uh, live, no matter what your faith is, um, if you don't have Christ Jesus um, as your Savior, personal Savior, you're not going to heaven. Uh, you can be religious. I was witnessing to a nurse that was at the hospital, and she said, we won't talk about these things here. I can't talk about religion or politics. 
And I said, I'm not. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're not going to heaven. And that, there's no other explanation. So giving us that understanding and that peace helps us to be able to communicate that to others. And I want to encourage you today that have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that, that the Lord will help you to be strong and to be convinced and then to stand convinced in these things and, and not be weak need. We don't need any believing, born-again believers today. We need strong believers that are confident of what they believe and that are convinced that these things are true. I need to hurry. I think it's important for us to grasp this understanding a little bit more as we look at verse number 10 because he talks about how that the death and the sting and the fear of death is gone. Uh, more people have come to me recently and said, I don't know what it's going to be like when I die. What is it like, Pastor? I don't know. I never died yet. <laughs> Are you planning something? Uh, my father was the first one that asked me, he's going to be 84, lives by himself in an apartment over in some prairie, and he slipped out of his chair and fell down and hit his head on the TV tray and got a wooden one there. And he said, I was out for a few minutes. I got back up and I sat in my chair, and I thought, I wonder if that's what it's like when I die. I just go. And I said, that, that's, that might be the way it goes, Dad. But I said, it's going to be glorious, Dad. Because at the age of 13, he put his faith and his trust in Jesus Christ. And I believe and I am convinced that when my father takes his last breath, he'll be with Jesus. And he'll be with his mother. He'll be with Mammy, his great-grandma. And this is her Bible. What a blessing to be able to know and have the confidence that you're going to see your loved one someday again. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. When you close your eyes in death, It'll be just a crossing over to a glorious, the beautiful sounds, the beautiful sights. So the foundation of his confidence, we see that in these verses. I want to skip some verses and look at verse number 13. I want to talk about the fuel of his confidence for just a minute. The fuel of his confidence, and let's go from here. Let's just read the, finish the chapter because of the time. Uh, 13 says, hold fast uh, the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwells in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia, of course, to turn away from me, of whom in these two other towns, the Lord gave mercy unto the house of Onesimus, or Nesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently. And then he found me, and the Lord grant unto him that he, of course, may find mercy of the Lord in that day. Hope he's going to get saved. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, and thou knowest very well. And so when we're thinking about the fuel of the confidence, I think we're talking about sound words or healthy speech, if you would. What, what fuels us? Sound doctrine fuels us. What fuels us when the word of God is being preached and explained to us? We can be strengthened in the inner man. And someone texted me that this, this week also and said, what is the inner man? That is where the Lord Jesus abides. That's where his spirit is inside of you. And by the way, if you do not have him, you know you don't have him. You don't, well, I don't know if I'm saved. I am saved. I think I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. If you have that much wavering, then you're probably not saved. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to help you. But sound, healthy words from the scriptures are absolutely essential, according to verse number 13. The indwelling of the Spirit kind of fuels us, if you would, in verse number 14. It's like a, a fountain within us. It's like we, we absorb it into us, and we kind of got this backwards. We think that we're supposed to look a look all the time. If you don't look this way, you don't look like you're saved. Oh, my. Think about that. The Lord Jesus himself 
would walk in here today and we wonder if he was saved according to some of the Baptist rules. I'm getting quiet in here. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, steady, gracious influence is so needed to assure us and ensure us in that Christ-likeness, that soft, sweet voice from the Spirit of God that is that bearing witness with my spirit that these things are true, that there is hope, that there is love, and there is faith that really matters. Uh, Someone wrote this, the sea can only be kept heaped up in waves by the constant pressure of the wind. Take away the pressure, and it soon flows back into its old level. So if we want, therefore, to get water, to keep it at a high level, we must do it by filling up from underneath. Applying this to our hearts, he wrote, we want to tone our hearts and lives to rise to the really higher level, to be more Christ-like, more peaceful with people, more holy. It must be done by filling up not merely agitating the surface by excitements and emotions. We may get great waves this way, but we shall have great hollows between them if we do, great valleys that we will fall into, and great commotions perhaps, but no real gain because it is only affecting the emotion and the intellect and it has not touched the will of the man. For it is God's grace in the heart, the gradual filling up of all of our needs and deficiencies by the Holy Spirit of God, which can alone raise our hearts and lives to a higher level of purity and holiness. And as we cast off all the bad habits, we need to be acquiring good ones in their place. And as we stir up by sermons and services to wish we live more holy lives, We need to be acting as well as wishing rightly if we want to get on with our lives. But this is no hopeless, heartless task, for the Lord's promises are forever sure, and we must turn to them. And what he's saying here basically is let the word of God dwell in us richly so that then there will be the psalms and the and the the singing of spiritual songs, and the verses will come back to our minds, and so it is taking in the word of God and filling us on on the inner man being strengthened and strong so that we can endure, so we can stand convinced. Also in good fellowship, good fellowship with good people, that's what helps us to fuel us, the proper kind of fellowship. Don't you love it when you're around someone that loves the Bible and loves the Lord? It's just, oh, it's just so exciting. It's like, wow, so like-minded. It's wonderful. And that's what he felt like here. And he wanted to just write his name out and say, what a a bless. This might be Onesimus, but Onesiphorus could be the long-term name of of Onesimus. I'm not sure. But the the Lord gave this particular person to refresh him. And it was refreshing when he came. It It was something that actually says, I'm so delighted to be in this person's presence. The Apostle Paul was saying that. John Wesley said, I want the whole Bible for my book. I want the whole Christ for my Savior. I want the whole church for my fellowship and the whole world for my mission field. Pretty powerful. There was a little old lady named Mammy. That's what we called our great-grandmother, but I read the story, so I thought I'd read it to you. It says Mammy had frequent, frequent trips to the post office and One day she was confronted with a super long line and all kinds of people there. And finally, one of the ladies that was there said, Mammy, all you need to do is go over and get stamps from the machine. Why don't you just use the stamp machine? You can get all the stamps you want right over there by the machine. Mammy looked at the young lady and said, I know, but the machine never asked me how my arthritis is. So 
Social media wants to know what's on your mind. Sometimes I just write none of your business. People need human contact. Yeah. We love you folks at home. But you can come. So we grow and we understand more of the gospel, and of the spirit of God. We understand of his sufferings and so on. What is the fruit of confidence? And the fruit of his confidence is found in those two verses that I skipped. And I am closing, by the way. Verse number 11 and verse number 12 gives us that fruit of that confidence I'm talking about. It says, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. That's what I am. The Apostle Paul, that's what I am. That's the fruit of his confidence. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Remember what he said in verse number eight to Timothy? Be thou, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Don't be ashamed of what he's done. I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded, and I am convinced that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So he had a purpose in life. Maybe you're thinking a little bit too much lately. And maybe you're wondering, why am I here? What is God? Is there a God? And is there a purpose? The answer is yes. And he wants you first to come to him. And then once you've come to him, you put your faith and your trust in him by receiving him. You believe in your heart, then confess with your mouth that he is the Christ. And if you haven't done that, or if you're not sure if you've done that, or you don't really know, then you can't stand in confidence. You're kind of wondering, he's actually calling you. The Spirit's saying, come unto me. Jesus wants to save you this morning. He wants to make it simple for you. He has made it very simple. That a little seven-year-old boy that had a hard time growing up called Dean Howell could be saved at seven years old. Amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was in kindergarten class, and I did not get the simple things. But God saved me by faith. Because now you're not saved by intellect, by reasoning. You're saved by the Holy Spirit of the God of heaven. The simplicity that is in Jesus Christ needs to be spread all over Madison. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. How come we always do that? I don't know. <laughs> this little fingernail of mine. I'm not ashamed of Christ. I'm not fearful. Because the Bible tells me here in this particular verse, he's going to keep, that's the word guard, that which I have committed. You see, when you came to him, he wrote your name down in the Lance Book of Life. <laughs> and it can never be taken out. Yeah. Powerful thing, because we, as people, sometimes cut off people. Say, well, they were, they were my friend, you know. He loves you enough to save you forever. Have you put your faith and your trust in him? The simplicity of it all. I'm convinced. I'm convinced and I am persuaded it is able to keep me until that day. Are you convinced? Do you stand convinced? God wants you to be. With every bow, every eye closed, if you would. Every eye closed and every head bowed just for a moment. I want to speak to you. 
Maybe you're struggling with your own understanding of salvation. And the Lord has opened up your eyes to what is true. But maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Howell, I, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. I want to be sure. Dear friend, the Bible says these things I wrote unto you that you may know you have eternal life. You don't have to go through life wondering. You can know because of what is written in the word of the God of heaven. And maybe this morning you'd say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I won't point you out. I won't make you do anything. I just want to pray for you. Just lift your hand and say, pray for me, because I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I'm not standing convinced. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that? Just lift up your hand and put it down really quick. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm not sure. Anyone else? Maybe then, for you, Christian, you've been a little bit fearful and afraid. Not necessarily ashamed of Christ, but been fearful to say something about him. Please, stand strong. And maybe you just need to come and renew your relationship with him. Why don't you come this morning? Would you please stand, no one looking around this morning? Let's have an invitation. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct in this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. not sure why don't you come this morning if you're a lady I'll have a lady take you and show you if you're a man I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven just come and have a man show you for the word of God maybe you just want to come and pray it's open for you here I am Lord Some are coming this morning, maybe. It's been a long time since you've come. So here I am, Lord. Maybe it's for baptism. Or membership. Come. Thank you so much for your patience. I know we're running a little bit late today, but God is so good. The word of God is powerful and it's like a hammer. It's like a, it's like fire. Um, I got a hammer in on my desk now. My son made it for me for Christmas and got to take a look at it. It's pretty sharp. Um, but it's a real blessing. Aaron, can you make your way up here? And I'd like for you to close our service with a word of prayer. And I believe that uh, 
Uh, Aaron is one of the hardest workers I know, so thankful for him here at Grace. He takes care of a lot of things and and um, behind the scenes, and it's just such a blessing to me. Aaron, just close our service. Remember, missionary team, 5 o'clock tonight, and then be back tonight, 6 o'clock service. We want to hear about Nathan and Lauren. There's experience there in South Africa and what God is doing there. If you want to make it back here at 6 o'clock tonight, we'll have another service. Uh, and, and then afterwards, we have fellowship, so uh, we'll look forward to that. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us together this morning. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Thank you for this message from Pastor Howell. I pray that you would help us to take what we have heard this morning, that we would carry it with us throughout the day, that you would help us to become more and more like Jesus Christ, that we would be his ministers and his witnesses to those whom we meet. I pray that you would uh, be with us now as we go through uh, our separate ways this afternoon, that you give us safety as we travel, bring us back again this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.